today I'm going to be showing you how to paint puffins. They're so cute. Look at them. How can you not want to paint this? All the materials I'm going to be using for this project are listed in the description below. I've designed this project to be super fun and super accessible to all ages and all skill levels. We're going to start by drawing our puffins. Yay! I recommend orienting your paper vertically, not horizontally. Please feel free to pause this video anytime you need time to catch up. Take a moment now to think about how much space you want your puffin to take up on your paper. Notice how the puffin on the left is smaller relative to the size of the paper and there is more space in the background, while the puffin on the right fills the whole paper. I recommend drawing your puffin to be as large as possible because it's going to be the focal point of your picture. If nothing else, definitely try to make your puffin at least as big as the puffin you see on the left. I've created this image to help you break down your puffin drawing into simple, easy shapes. Feel free to pause it here if that's helpful. And by the way, for your added convenience, I've also added timestamps in the description below. Using light pencil marks, draw the basic shapes that make up your puffin. Draw a large circle for the body, add two triangles for legs, and draw two diamond shapes for the feet. Slightly above the circle body, draw a medium sized circle for the head. Use a rounded line to connect the head to the body. Add a slightly rounded and elongated triangle for the beak. Pencil in two long skinny ovals on each side of the body to indicate the wings. Draw a straight line to connect the wing to the shoulder. Now I'm gonna go back and start to clean up my pencil marks with an eraser and make my puffin look a bit more realistic. I recommend taking a moment to really pause and study all the lines that make up the puffin's face. Draw a line that goes from the beak across the top of the head. Draw a small circle where the beak connects to the face. Draw a curved line connecting the circle to the lower jaw. Draw a curved triangle for the eye. Add a line connecting the eye to the back of the head. Add a band at the base of the beak. Add a sideways V in the middle of the beak. Ta-da! Now I'm outlining my finished puffin so you can see it better. Don't worry about doing this part. In order to orient your amazing puffin in physical space, I recommend drawing a horizon line behind the body of your puffin. The horizon line indicates where the land ends and the sky begins. <laughs> now it's time for break time with babies. Okay, now it's time to paint our glorious puffins. I recommend painting your background first. I'm pouring some turquoise, blue, white, and pink for my background. I'm going to paint my background with a one inch flat brush. I'm gonna do my background a little different than usual by starting with a solid layer of white paint. Now, while my white paint is still wet, I'm gonna take some blue and some turquoise and mix them together and paint directly on top of the white paint. This will create a really cool light effect. Just take a moment here to notice those nice, gentle back and forth brush strokes. I recommend using a smaller brush to paint around the edges of your puffin. Play around and experiment with how you're going to mix the white and the turquoise paint in the background and see what kind of cool effects you can create. I ended up going back and adding a bunch of white paint on top of my turquoise to create the effect of clouds in the sky. For the bottom part of my sky, I'm going to start with a solid layer of white paint and then I'm going to go back over it while it's still wet and add pink and then blend them both together. I'm going to use a combination of gray and white to paint the ground. And now we're ready to paint our puffin, yay! I'm going to paint all the black parts of my puffin first. Be sure to use a smaller brush when you do this. I like to alternate between a size eight and a size one brush. Paint the top of the head, the wings and neck, the upper part of the beak, 
use a teeny tiny brush, like a size one brush, to add a little eyeliner to the bottom eyelid. Paint that tiny section along the jaw. Paint the pupil black as well. Notice how I leave a white dot inside the pupil. This looks like light reflecting off the pupil and makes the eye come to life. If you look closer here, you can also see that I add a reddish, orangish band around the pupil. You have a couple options when it comes to painting your puffin body. You can paint the body solid white or paint the body white with a light gray shadow. If adding a light gray shadow sounds hard, then just skip it and paint the body solid white. Here I'm adding some darker gray to the edge of the underbelly and the inner thighs. This part is totally optional. Your puffin will still look awesome even if you don't do this. Now again, you have the option to either paint the face solid white or paint it white with some light gray shadows. Do whatever is easy for you. Don't overthink it and keep it simple. Remember, this is just for fun. I'm using an orangish reddish color to paint the beak. I'm painting the sideways V yellow. I'm also painting the band at the base of the beak yellow. I'm using orange to paint that little circle next to the beak. Look how cute it looks. I'm painting the band around the pupil orangish red and I'm painting the feet orangish red as well. I'm going to outline the toes of the feet with a thin straight brown line. And then I'm going to add a cute little puff and toenail at the end of each toe. Look how cute that is. I suggest adding some simple flowers to give your painting some extra color. You can paint some thin green lines for flower stems, then add tiny blotches of pink and yellow paint on top of the stems. You might want to go back and add some tiny plates of grass. Da 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 da! Here's my finished painting. If I were going to crop this painting, I might crop it to look like the image on the right. Let me know in the comments below which one you like best. But wait, don't leave yet because I put all kinds of super fun, sneaky, fun things at the end of my videos. Be sure to stick around and check out the other totally amazing art tutorials I have on this channel, such as dragonfly paintings, treehouse designs, peacock paintings, beach house illustration, sea turtles, flamingo paintings, treasure maps, rainbow parrots, banana splits, steampunk machines, Picasso portraits, and much more. If you enjoyed watching today's video, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Please support all of this amazing art and creativity by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I teach super fun live online art classes to kids as well as to adults. You can find out more information by visiting my website, rainbowparrotart.com. <laughs>